Hi, I'm Aisha Jaffer, the evening host here on The Current, and I'm here with Craig Finn. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining me. Um, so you're on the road now in the States, and then you're going to Europe. How does it all feel? Just how does that feel? <laughs> it feels, I mean, it feels great to be out here. And um, this is the first day, the first show with the Uptown Controller since I've had this record out. So that feels like a, a monumental day. Uh, we've been doing Hold Steady gigs um, throughout the year. But after staying home for quite a bit, it feels like each one, you you know, it's, you don't take them for granted, that's for sure. Yeah, there's like a new appreciation, I feel like, for doing things, which you kind of touch on in your album, because Legacy of Rentals, this is your fifth studio album as a solo record. I know you've done tons of albums, uh, but the fifth of, of your solo and Legacy of Rentals, the concept of it, you know, it's so fascinating. I like the, something you said about it where, and and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but about your soul's kind of in your bodies for this temporary time. Can you like expand on what yeah. that means? I mean, a legacy of rentals was kind of a funny title to me. I, I, it made me laugh a little bit because um, for one, I, I, I do rent my apartment. And during the pandemic, a lot of my friends started buying things. And I was like, well, I guess I'm just a renter forever. But then expanding on it that we kind of are so, you know, our, our bodies are kind of rentals for our souls, you know, uh, our bodies are temporary, our souls uh, hopefully are forever. So uh, it was kind of a, a, you know, expanding on the rental theme uh, all the way and knowing that we're that we might not always be here. And a lot of the songs are about that are memorials and um, deal with how we remember people and places that are no longer with us. Well, and, and that idea I find so fascinating, it almost seems like a realization. And mm -hmm. so I was wondering, what is the catalyst of kind of like talking about and addressing that idea of like how you remember a person or a place or even these major events in, in life? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, this record was started, my um, partner, Angie is a nurse and when COVID started to happen, um, she started working directly with COVID patients at her hospital and I had to move out and uh, I moved in with her sister and her sister's family. And I started, I said, well, I better get to work. I'm going to start writing. And I started writing a lot. And one of the things um, I, I was writing about was remembering this, you know, momentous time in history that it seemed to be unfolding. And also right at the top of the pandemic, I lost a friend and suddenly, and it was not necessarily COVID related, but um, because of the pandemic, we weren't allowed um, to, or we weren't able to have a memorial service. Oh. And so, uh, or at least not for a while. And so I was kind of thinking like, how do, you know, there's this, with this lack of closure, how do we, how do we remember people? How do like, how do these stories get passed down? Uh, I had a million great stories about my friend, Brian. How do we keep telling him? How do we keep his memory alive? And I think that um, directly and indirectly led to the songs that ended up on this record. Well, and then I was going to say, like, I know that you are a storyteller mm -hmm. and you create these characters. You have these characters, these ongoing characters in the songs. But to me, and you could tell me if I'm wrong again, because this is me just mm -hmm. interpreting, but I felt like this album was a little more personal. Like, usually there's like a space between, but I felt it was a little closer in this yeah. one. Well, um, John Gregory Dunn, I think, was the one that said the first character in any novel is the author. <laughs> and uh, I, I do think, you know, especially in the solo stuff, I'm able to be more vulnerable and probably more personable, uh, personal. My, uh, you know, the hold steady is such a, you know, the sound is so big and I'm usually writing music to, um, uh, you know, things that the other guys in the band give me and, and they, they tend to be big stories, big, you know, people getting shot, people falling off the roof. And, you know, with this um, stuff, it's a little, um, smaller, both in sound, but also in scale of the story. So I think people can be doing a little more mundane things and maybe things that more resemble my actual personal life. Right. And well, and then you also sometimes you did the stylistic thing, which I know you've done in the past, but I felt like it, it was more in this record where you're kind of you're singing and you're speaking. Yeah. And as a storyteller, that goes that kind of mends a, a couple of ideas and, and worlds, I guess, together. So what, what was that a conscious choice? And did that just kind of come naturally? Well, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it comes naturally. And but um, a couple records ago, I did a song called God in Chicago, that was kind of just a, a real spoken piece. And the producer kind of, I was trying to turn it into a real song, you know, more of a singing song. And the producer said, No, 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 just talk this one. And it was really effective. And we, we both really loved it. And I think people uh, really reacted to it. And uh, with this one, I really wanted to lean into that kind of storytelling. And I thought um, I kind of got interested in that part where you're 
just at the edge of talking or singing. And because when you can talk, 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 and then sing, it kind of takes off. Like the, the wheels of the plane are just getting off the runway. And uh, there's a really a beautiful moment there that I was kind of trying to play with. And um, also we did sort of a new instrumentation on this record and uh, brought in a 14 piece string section. So I thought of with like kind of um, the, the straight talking, but with, and then with the grandiose strings, there was kind of this um, opportunity to kind of a go, gone with the gone with the wind, real cinematic moment, you know. Yeah, and a lot of these songs are just so visual. Like um, "Birthdays" is the one that we're playing now, mm-hmm. and I even even though that's not straight talking singing, I feel like you still push that edge with that song. Yeah. And I feel like that is just a relatable song. You have this family member, you're maybe like the glue has become <laughs> elastic because you've missed, you know, the pa- parents passing or those gatherings aren't happening. And that's something I feel like everyone can kind of attune to. And I'm just kind of curious, like in, in your specific um, ideation of it, like what inspired that? Well, I think I was thinking a lot about, you know, when I'm talking about memory and memorial, but family seems to be another part of that. It's how we pass things down. There's family lore, there's, you know, family traditions and whatnot. And I was thinking about a, a, a family that maybe had uh, gone less than nuclear or whatever. I don't know what, what you'd say, but it had become <laughs> a little frayed. Yeah. And how, you know, uh, um, I'm really interested in this, like, like, you know, our modern technology of like Facebook or whatever, reaching out to people. Uh, I think there's a lot of ideas and stories of, hey, remember me, you know, like, uh, yeah. like we haven't talked in 12 years, but I'm here. And uh, I've, I've written a lot of songs in the past, say, five, six years that sort of start that about a um, kind of a long distance reach out, both long distance and miles, but also maybe in years. I've had a few of those. Have you had a few? Yeah. Of those? yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like you start touring around, and and you know, people pop up. Yeah. yeah that's my cousin. <laughs> yeah. Right. I actually, just as a side, like I got um, citizenship in uh, Luxembourg because I found a lost cousin. So sometimes it can benefit you. <laughs> my, yeah, my brother-in-law just uh, just did that in uh, Austria. So wow. That's, uh... <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, so another thing, I wanted to talk about your first track as well, mm-hmm. because you mentioned that it's kind of like a eulogy. And and I think that's so interesting when you're talking about memories and remembrance and this time. It makes more sense when you put it into context. But did you, obviously that's a conscious choice to choose a eulogy, but instead of a summary, it's a eulogy. And so I'm just kind of curious, like, you know, a eulogy is kind of in a, in a dark, yeah. a, a dark perspective. So... Well, yeah. What is meant by someone? That? I mean, someone has to die to to make a eulogy, right? right yeah. So, <laughs> but that is like a, one of those very talky tracks that we we're talking about, where it's it's very much a spoken thing. And I, I guess I was really inspired that you know the idea of a memorial and and um, that everyone, you know, everyone, we all have original sin, we all have faults, etc. But you know, when when we pass, like everyone tries to bring up the best parts about us. And um, I wanted to write a story about a, someone who was probably a flawed character, um, but you know, it, it ends up with him saying, Rachel did her best with the deal she'd been dealt. And that's, that's what I got for a eulogy. And I, I don't know, I, f- I felt it was a very beautiful sentiment and I was really attracted to it. And it's probably my favorite song on the record still. I really enjoy that one. I feel like it's very strong and it it is like the summary and the eulogy all in one. And there's one line that I'm going to be a little silly with you that I love. So I'm going to read it is we map where we've been by the scars on our skin. And I love that because when you meet people, sometimes you're like, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that? When'd you get that? Um, So I'm going to ask you, do you have a scar that is on your map that you're willing to share? <laughs> well, this one I burned. I can't remember that. Like, there's a little burn there. What else? Uh, I don't know if I have any like really great scars. Um, maybe I haven't been careless enough in my life. You're, right. I'm like impressed. I've got this really big one right here. That's oh, yeah, an Alaska one. one. Okay. I know you're going to Alaska, but don't worry. That yeah, was, that was a to... very unique concept. I like to tell kids that it was bears. So. There was this other thing. As I was like listening to your record, I noticed that you use the term like the fish tank. The fish tank comes up, but it comes up in different contexts. Like it's not like you're only trapped in the fish tank. It's also like there's there's other ways of interpreting that. But I imagine that's reflected into maybe what you were going through at the time. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I think the fish tank was sort of the idea of uh, limited space and, you know, like like a, having a past that you couldn't kind of get away from, you know, like you keep swimming in this tank and you keep running, you know, it's an enclosed space. So you think you're in the ocean, but you just keep, you know, keep moving around. And I was thinking about that, about sort of relationships um, we never escape, friendships that don't ever kind of... Um, resolve or or go away and uh that idea um again sort of connected to memory and connected to our lives you know that things that we bring with us and uh, so the fish tank i started playing with that and it kept coming up and and i kept saying oh i like it there too so i think there's four different mentions of fish tanks in the record and one came up very naturally it's it's um talks about an actual fish tank and then I started using it metaphorically. Yeah, I really I loved I noticed uh-huh. that cuz I I don't know. I draw to the aquatic and I also uh-huh. felt like fish tank and you think fish bowl you're stuck in this thing but I took it to a next level. And I like those hidden things even if it's not meant to be hidden but like within art so it added well, to the whole experience. Well, it's really. definitely the one of those things that you hope that you hope people notice, yes. you know? <laughs> I'm so glad. <thanks. laughs> Well, I wanted to also ask, I, I know um, you are from here, and I might screw this name up, Edina. That's right. Yes. <laughs> uh, welcome to Minneapolis. <laughs> from Edina. And so, you know, being being from here, but also now living in New York, like, I, I always like to ask the question from artists who are from here, because this is, you know, so many great artists have come out of here. Of course, Prince, Lizzo, you, uh, do you think there's something about here, the scene here that kind of fosters and supports talent that is different from other places? Yeah, I do. Um, and I, I haven't been here for uh, 22 years, almost 22 years. So it's, I, I, I think it's the same, you know, I can, but I would say that when I was here, I felt like as a scene, more people went to shows in Minneapolis than in, you know, in anywhere else that I've gone that is, um, the same size, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and I think there's a couple reasons that, and I think it one thing that really helps it is the institutions. I mean, First Avenue is 50 years old. The current's been here for a long time now. It's a lot of other scenes. I feel like you know they have a club that's going for three years, then it closes, then they have nothing, and then they have something else that happens for a few years, but they don't have this kind of like structure that I think has really helped Minneapolis music scene. And I just somehow culturally. Even by the time I was in high school, I felt like people had really it had it had that reputation, and people were proud of it. Yeah, that's the community too, yeah. right? I'm learning that as I go, and I like hearing from people who have been a part of it. You know, well, I've got two fun questions for you. All right, one I need to know because I am a dog lover. Um, your namesake pup, uh, Rosalita. Yeah, how is she doing? <laughs> she's so cute. Um, <laughs> she's uh, uh, I got her five years ago, so I think she's turning. Um, well, she's going to be 12 um, wow. just uh, next week. So that's um, a big one. I mean, roughly 12, I think, because she's, she's a rescue. But she's doing good. Summer's not her favorite time of year. Right. Uh, the heat and also 4th of July is definitely not her favorite no. holiday. <laughs> so uh, no the fireworks start um, right about now. So she's probably going to have not her favorite month, but we'll, you know, we'll make it up to her with treats and good pets and stuff. <laughs> she lives up to her Bruce Springsteen namesake. She, uh, absolutely. Um, she is, uh, uh, you know, um, the, <laughs> she, she, um, uh, she can jump a little higher. She can, uh, <laughs> uh, she know Papa says she knows does, that I don't have any money. That's true too. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, so I heard that you actually, you try to write something every day and you read most mm-hmm. days. And so that just fosters my idea that of course, everybody has many layers of inspiration and creativity. Do you have another talent, another hidden talent or one that you'd want to share? Ooh, uh, <laughs> anything that I'm particularly particularly good at. Um, I don't really have a hidden talent. Um, I think I'm, uh, uh, I read a lot, but, uh, I will say that, um, I used to say that I was proud to say, um, 
I've never had a cavity, but then I had one just kind of recently. Uh, so I have twelve. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm fi- almost fifty-one years old, so I, was, I thought that was That's, a pretty good thing. Look, one is a huge achievement. So <laughs> one's not bad. Let's, yeah. Well, I got a dentist uh, in a few weeks, so fingers crossed. Okay, fair enough. Well, is there anything else you'd want our listeners to know before I let you go? No, just uh, uh, thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Craig Finn here with his fifth solo studio album, Legacy of Rentals on the Current.